हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू एडू शास्त्र आई एम विनोद शंकर एंड दिस क्लास इज ऑन द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ क्रिटिकल रीजनिंग एंड हाउ क्लोज इट इज टू रीडिंग कॉम्प्रिहेंशन हाउ आर दीज टू क्लोज द फर्स्ट थिंग इज वट इज रीडिंग कॉम्प्रिहेंशन सम ऑफ यू माइट ऑलरेडी नो वॉट इज रीडिंग कॉम्प्रिहेंशन okay so a long passage of uh, passage of about 350 to say 500 words some some may be shorter but usually the length is about 500 words you have to read this make sense of this uh, text and answer questions okay but the question the big big question is sir when i start reading uh, when i'm reading the first paragraph okay i i come to the second paragraph i forget the first paragraph now i'll tell you how this relates to critical reasoning a little later but initially okay when i when i read such long texts sir i tend to forget okay when when i am reading the second or the third paragraph i've already forgotten what i read in the uh, previous paragraphs why does that happen first of all okay why does that happen and is it uh, a big deal will i be able to get rid of it that uh, i'm able to retain text that i have read is it possible all those things will depend on whether you understand what a passage is so we'll discuss what a passage is and how it relates to critical reasoning so it's important first of all to realize before everything else it is important to realize that whether it is a very small paragraph whether it's one sentence or a written sentence one sentence or a paragraph or an essay uh, or say a multiple a passage with multiple paragraphs the objective is the same that is you are trying to communicate with the receiver the writer is trying to communicate with the audience okay now the problem is the uh, the writer has to put it in such a fashion that the audience the communication in such a fashion that the audience is able to understand what is in his mind very almost the same okay the, the the trouble is when i'm talking in front of you when i'm standing in front of you and talking then my facial expressions my body language the rise and fall of my voice that is the intonation okay all those things will help you to understand what i have in my mind okay but in in a writing the uh, problem is you will not be able to understand what tone he is saying it so it's all very important it, everything must be woven into the text itself so the author has a typical issue uh, in his hands so what he does is he tries to communicate in the most structured way possible and by selecting words which which can very clearly tell the audience what he has in his mind and what kind of emotion he feels while he is writing his peace okay so all said and done the when it comes to the uh, written communication it's a little tougher for the author to tell the audience what he has in his mind okay and it is also tough for the audience because the the audience most of us do not know that a passage is structured so there is a double whammy okay the the author is trying to put it in a structure but he cannot give you a footnote every time saying that you see uh, or a side note saying that she this is the structure i have written it in so please understand the structure and understand my that with every piece of writing i can't do that okay so a reader is supposed to know all these things okay so so immediately what is the structure is a question that comes to our minds okay if if it is a passage how would the author communicate his view point his opinions okay then comes the structure some of you might already know the structures but basically the structure is pretty simple let's see and and then i tell you understanding the such structure is paramount to understanding critical reasoning also okay so the structure of a passage is pretty simple huh? a passage it's a written communication it has got the message of the author it has got the message of the author call it the opinion call it the solution to a problem call it whatever okay a point of view a, uh, an opinion a solution to a problem compare contrast and uh, 
like reaching a conclusion you can do anything but the author must have a message suppose i did, do not have anything to tell my audience when wh- why am i going to write we do not even speak when we do not have to communicate uh, when, when we do not have anything to say to the other person we dancing do everything but then we keep to ourselves okay we open our mouths and talk to somebody when there is a purpose but in written uh, communications there must always be a purpose so therefore the author has the purpose let's call it the message or let's call it the conclusion etc and then whatever he has in his mind he must also support it with evidence why do i think in a particular fashion that i do uh, then i'll have to give you supporting information like Virat Kohli scored a century, and all of us went Gaga. Okay, I did not watch the match, but uh, everybody does. Okay, so what makes that? What makes us go Gaga over somebody? So I'll have to again explain it. This he has done, done with whatever. Okay, greatest batsman in the world and everything. Okay, so all these things, the supporting information is very essential for driving home the author's main point. Now we have got technical terms for this. The passage itself, the passage itself is called the argument. Okay. Now remember, a passage itself is called the argument, but the argument does not mean that it's a verbal duel. It's not a fight. Okay. It is what the author wants to send across to the uh, reader. So the passage itself is called the argument. Okay. Then, then the message is called the. conclusion okay now the conclusion is what i told you it could be an opinion it could be a solution it could be anything and the supporting information is called the premise so once you understand this structure basic structure you start understanding the paragraphs and uh, sir if these are only two and these look so easy then why should we have such a long passage hmm? why should we have such a long passage now the thing is i might have one or two sentences as my conclusion one or two sentences only as my conclusion but i need to give at least five reasons so i'll write five paragraphs i'll write five different paragraphs for each of my reasons okay so the passage becomes longer okay so the message has to be there the supporting information has to be there and then the things start and then everything else starts now let us bring in the element of critical reasoning and reading on acha we'll wait for critical reasoning a little bit more let's let me talk a little bit more about reading comprehension now this is what you look for in a small paragraph in a critical reasoning paragraph or a reading comprehension okay but the question is so where where does the author put his conclusion in the beginning in the middle at the end where does he put his conclusion he can put his conclusion anywhere in the passage anywhere in the passage he can start with his conclusion and then go on to explain what he has in his mind or he could give a sort of background now let me tell you these are not the only two things that are important to a passage these two are and these two are essential without which you cannot write a passage but i may include some more optional elements i may include some more optional elements one is called the background information sometimes the author may include background information in the fear that the audience may not know what i'm talking about so giving you a little bit of a background about what i'm talk going to talk about what my conclusion is about so i give you a background and then i write my conclusion and then maybe i'll give start giving my premise okay the premise that is the reasons the reason could be one two three four it could be many premises could be one or many okay now a good reader a good reader is always looking for these sentences within the passage where what is the main idea why did you write all these sentences around what point have you written all these all these words okay when you write with that kind of mind you will understand what the passage is saying which means you see the critical part has already come into it as soon as you ask questions your mind is working you are curious to know okay you have, have a critical mind so even during even as we start reading a passage we have started being critical that is we want to understand you start asking questions you say oh, well well what do you have in your mind where where is that main point 
Now, when with that curiosity, you read the passage, you understand the passage because immediately one or two sentences will look up. They'll uh, they'll stare you in your face, and you say that oh, this is the main point. Okay, and then all the reasons. Okay, let me give you an example, and you will see how these things work. Okay, how these things work. Now, if I tell you, if I tell you a story, a small story, will you be able to understand? Will you be able to tell me where the conclusion is? Very, it's a very small paragraph. Uh, I, uh, okay. It's a very small paragraph. Identify where the conclusion is. Okay. Uh, tell me, like, uh, uh, realistic art is all about realistic is all about drawing things which we are aware of, things that surround us. Okay, like a tree, an animal, a person, etc. Because we can relate to this. We would say that if we look, if we stand in front of a realistic art, we would uh, go gaga over it and say if it is really uh, detailed, we would say what creativity. But if I make you stand in front of an front of an abstract art, which does not really have anything that you can relate to, you might simply walk away for lack of for lack of interest in it. You don't even know what to relate to, and you say. What does this require? Like M. F. Hussein's paintings. Okay, he was an abstract artist. So when you stand stand in front of his uh, work, okay, maybe out of out of the desire to impress others to who are around you, you might say wow, wow. Okay, but in the heart of hearts, you know that it makes little sense. Okay, and you say, what a wastage of time. This anybody could do. Okay, M. F. Hussein's painting, anybody. Could do. Where is that uh, creativity? You might argue that. Abstract abstract art requires uh, less creativity than realistic art. But let me tell you, abstract art requires greater creativity than realistic art. If I say this, you are going to you are going to counter argue. I know you will have two or three four points to counter argue, saying that realistic art is more creative. I can actually answer those three questions. This is your question first. Question number one, my answer is this. My, your question number two, my answer is this. Your question number three, in support of realistic art, and my answer is this. So, where was the main idea expressed? There was one. There were one or two sentences. Okay, where did I mention the main idea? And your objection, my answer. Your objection, my answer, were the premises. But actually, what I was going to do in the passage, I mentioned it as one sentence. What was the sentence? Can you can you tell me where was it? In the beginning or in the middle? Because the rest of them, your objections and my my uh, my answers, your objections and my answers were the premises. Yes. Abstract art requires more creativity. That is my point of view, and I'm trying to prove that. Abstract art requires more creativity. Okay, that sentence was the main point of the passage, and everything else. Your objection, my answer. Your objection, my answer. Your your, your objection, or your or your uh, objection saying that, or your uh, support for realistic art saying that realistic art requires creativity because of this, and I would counter argue saying that no. Uh, more of that kind of skill is required in create uh, abstract art. Okay, so what we find out is every time I write a passage, I have to somewhere or the other mention my main idea. Okay, and then support. So one, if you are reading a say a Hindu editorial or Indian Express editorial, whichever whichever newspaper you are reading, or say you are reading the Aeon or the uh scientist or a guardian etc and then you are not able to understand what the author is trying to say now start reading with a critical mind that is ask questions what is what is it that you are trying to tell me as soon as you say that you start spotting sentences which are the uh, which which are the like uh, the main ideas or the which are which is the main idea of the author okay so this is very very important and then Sir, then comes the uh, another question. You say, sir, the supporting information, the premise you say 
can be one or many. Yes. If I want to convince you, there could be only one reason with which I could convince you, I think. Or I might think of many other reasons with which I might convince you. Okay. And what all forms could it take? It could take the form of experiences, data, experiences or uh, pieces of data and research work, etc. All these could give me uh, support to drive home my point. Now, when, when we come to the me message, when we come to the conclusion, sometimes the conclusions are very clearly written. So this is what is my idea. Now, having said that, there is a direct message and there could also be something which is not directly written, but it could be understood. That is, there is an additional conclusion that could also be drawn. Conclusion A is author has written it, but conclusion B could also be uh, drawn. But this is not given. There is only information in the passage and conclusion number A. Conclusion number B is not given. So there could also be an indirect message. Or sometimes he may leave out the conclusion altogether. He only gives the premise, uh, all the supporting information and leaves the drawing of the conclusion to you. Okay, again, if that happens, it happens in a passage that is reading comprehension passages. It also happens in critical reason. So there is actually no difference as such. Let me come to the question parts of it now. Now, in uh, reading comprehension, what type of questions are asked? Direct questions. Okay. Questions like, what is the, what is the answer to this particular word? Highlighted word. What is the answer to this highlighted word? Now, as soon as I say highlighted word, it is printed in the passage. It's a direct question because you can find the data within the passage. Any question that has the answer printed in the passage. You just need to read, understand, and uh, look at that uh, sentence where that answer is given, and you directly write it, are called direct questions. Some of you may have this doubt. You may ask me, sir, how do I read a long passage? Do I read the questions first, or I read the passage first? I'll come to that later. But first of all, let's understand. Direct questions are the easiest questions, because even without reading, you could read the question, keep that question in mind and uh, search for the answers. Okay, as soon as you come to the sentence, you see, oh, this is what it says. And then you write the, choose one of the options. Direct questions are the easiest. Okay, you don't require any special skills for this. Simply, if you can understand English, enough. If you do not understand the entire text, it will work. Not a problem. That's why in schools, you never struggled with uh, reading passages because all the questions were direct. So you never struggled with the, uh, reading passages and getting good marks in English. But when it comes to a uh, tougher examination, a higher examination, a competitive exam, you start struggling because we have these two comprehension based questions. Now, these questions are limited to longer passages. Okay. These, can, these questions can also be asked on a very small paragraph, but if you want to look at the difference between reading comprehension and critical reasoning, then longer passages tend to have these questions. What are these questions? There are typically three questions. Okay. Three questions asked on comprehension. That is, did you understand the conclusion made by the author? Now, this conclusion is given as what is the primary purpose of the author? It means where does the author state his purpose? Which sentences? What is the main idea? What is the main theme? Okay. Whenever these questions come, you simply understand that they are asking you those one or two sentences where the author makes his, states his point of view and around which he has written all his premises. So premises are not to be included. You uh, are, even if you include the premise, make sure that the conclusion part is also included. Even if you want to write the premise, write them. But don't write only the premises. That will be half the answer because conclusion is what is meant by primary purpose, main idea, main theme, central idea, central theme, etc. Okay. The second question that is asked is, what is the best title for this passage? What is the best title for this passage? Now, when, as soon as I say the best title for this passage, then you have to again go back to the main idea because a title should be able to tell us a title should be able to tell us the story itself. A title should be able to tell us the story. So will we do some examples? Yes, I'll show you some examples. Don't worry. I'll ask all those questions in those paragraphs. They are very small. Okay, we can actually do that. Now, 
the title should be able to tell us the entire story that is including the primary purpose so it's very important if you understand the conclusion of the passage then the title will be limited to the conclusion only so from the conclusion itself you can find out the title in the previous example i gave you about realistic art and abstract art if i ask you which title would you choose abstract art requires more creativity that or realistic art is not that creative which one would you choose as the answer in the previous example that i had given which one would you choose uh, what would you choose as the answer abstract art requires more creativity or realistic art requires less creativity what will be right as the main idea what did the author argue for do hi there there are only two options you tell me which one first the first one very good because he was arguing uh, he was arguing about abstract art requiring more creativity so please keep that in mind okay we focus on the passage we don't try to say anything else now you see abstract art requires more creativity now so you might say ki sir we were also comparing real realistic art but the problem is if i say all x are y all x are y see cri uh, critical reasoning is kicking in now now uh, the ability to think logically is critical reasoning all x are y then it does not mean that therefore all y are x huh this does not necessarily mean this it may or may not be true therefore sticking to what the passage says okay now when when i say the title or the primary purpose etc then i cannot write anything that i can bring from outside no you have to limit yourself to what the author says if the author says in the passage he says the sun rises in the west and these are my reasons and when i ask you what is the primary purpose you don't say the author is an idiot okay that is not what i asked you what i asked you the question says what is the primary purpose of the author what do you think about him was not the question so understanding the question well and then answering it so when i say the primary purpose of the author the author wants to prove that the sun rises in the west whether you laugh at him or you cry at his uh, uh, idiocy doesn't matter okay so uh, so two questions and then the last last question now this bamboozles many a student uh, tones sir what is the tone of the author sir tone is first of all the word tone itself what does tone mean tone is the emotion expressed by the author author is a human being and if he is writing about something which is very close to his heart then his feelings are going to come out okay if it is not anything that is bland say he is trying to explain a mathematical problem to you then his tone is going to be flat neutral tones there are things with which in which we can write neutral tones like if i try to teach you nouns or pronouns i cannot have an optimistic tone or a negative tone we try to put in tones a good teacher always tries to weave in tones so that you can you can capture the student's attention okay but it is bland all said and done noun is the name of a place person thing is bland okay it doesn't uh, it do, it won't excite you or the teacher okay but the teacher has to make it excite, exciting for you that's a different story but what i'm saying is if it's a book okay on mathematics and it says compound interest It can, he cannot add emotions to it, or biology book. He cannot add an, add emotions to that. Okay, so tones are about emotions, and there are many different human emotions, and they'll have words sarcastic, or say humorous, or say angry, or say irritated, or you say skeptical. There are so many things, so so many myriad human emotions, and all of them will have a word. Okay, now. so that's about comprehension based questions now my thing is this come in reading comprehension of the, the passages of longer sizes okay the compre reading comprehension passages of longer sizes so comprehension based questions though they require critical skills they are not called critical reasoning questions per se because we i'm asking you about the author's opinion here okay what he's saying and how he's saying it and uh, what is the tone what is the color he adds to his tone etc these questions are what are critical reasoning questions but there is a catch here 
critical reasoning questions. Sir, will we not see critical reasoning questions in reading comprehension passages, longer passages? Yes, you do. So, if you know reading comprehension well, then you also know critical reasoning well. If you know critical reasoning well, then you also know reading comprehension well. These two are complementary. So, let us not try to separate them. The only thing is you have to learn the skills for all the three types of questions. Direct questions, I can give you very easy uh, solutions. Sir, how to choose the correct answer. Comprehension-based questions, I can tell you. But when it comes to indirect questions, then there are a lot of terminologies to be learned. And the correct way to reason out uh, uh, is, has also to be learned. Okay, so indirect questions will require a little bit of more knowledge. Okay, comprehension-based questions are the easiest because there are only typically three, four questions done. Okay, so let's come to that part. Let's see what indirect questions could do. Okay. Give me a second. Just give me a second. Okay, so indirect questions are typically critical reasoning questions, but let us not forget that even reading, uh, reading and understanding a passage itself is a critical skill. Reading, because you are asking questions, you are trying to ask questions, resolve them with, from the, with the data that the author has given and the things which are not resolved, you start thinking. That is what is a, it is a critical exercise when you are reading a comprehension passage. When you start reading, it's a critical exercise. When you watch a movie, it's a critical exercise. How much of uh, critical thinking you do depends uh, depends on the person's uh, like uh, perspective or how much he wants to think. Okay, when you are watching Gadar two, great movie, beautiful movie, but if you can pull out, say in Gadar one. Okay, if you can pull out that uh, what the hand pump from the earth, our mind starts laughing automatically. Though you are interested in that uh, action, your mind is actually asking a question. Is that so easy, man? And who has done that? Show me one person on this earth who has actually done it. Okay, leaving our uh, great sunny day out. Okay, has anybody else been able to do it? Okay, maybe Rajnikanth in the uh, Rajnikanth in uh, South Indian movies. Okay, okay, all these things are. So we, we even and then you tell yourself, okay, I'm being driven into a fantasy world. Okay, these things do not happen. So you're thinking critically. So what I'm saying is critical faculties are always on work. If you're a human being, we are thinking all the time. Okay, you're trying to make connections. Verbal, huh, very good. Verbal reasoning and critical reasoning are, are the same or different. They are the same, Pravin. Ashish. Okay, they are the same. Only thing is. When I say verbal reasoning, then I do not have to write passages all the time. Critical reasoning is about written text, okay, about, about a passage, paragraph, etc. Verbal reasoning it has to do with words and letters. So it could be anything. Okay, I give you a series of words and I ask you what is the connection between uh, uh, among these words. Or I say, I give you an analogy. X is to Y, therefore, X and Y share a particular relation so which are the following which of the following shares the same kind of relationship as the first one those will come under verbal reasoning so verbal reasoning is slightly a bigger uh, subject and critical reasoning is a part of it okay critical reasoning has to do with written text that is it has to do with passages paragraphs etc okay verbal reasoning has to do with words get my point did you understand it ashish okay so Indirect questions. Uh, indirect questions are uh, critical reasoning questions. Let's look at some of them. Okay. Come, let's come to them. Basic structure of RC is important for understanding CR questions again. See, which means if you have understood that the argument consists of the premise and the conclusion, the premise, the basis, the reasons on which the conclusion is drawn, then critical reasoning questions will become very easy because as soon as you understand that based on your understanding of the premise and the conclusion that we do in the passage also, we don't do anything uh, different in the passage. Okay. And then here I, I may ask you different types of questions. Okay. Why don't you ask, sir, uh, critical reasoning questions in longer passages? Because you might have to spend a lot of time. 
you have to collate information from different places and put put them together but that is also done exams also ask critical reason critical reasoning indirect questions in uh, reading comprehension passages also and smaller passages also okay now strategy to prepare for critical reasoning sir how do we prepare it these are the three things required no critical reasoning concepts and question types now this is very very important and it cannot be taught in one class i can show you some examples but you cannot do them in one class okay because there are many concepts to be learned active reading what is this sir? active reading is what i was telling critical reading that is if your mind is working if your mind is asking questions when you are reading a passage it's active reading that you are with the text okay whenever the author says something you are able to, suppose when we read a joke when we read a joke and we laugh did the did the joke ask you to laugh no it did not say anything it actually tickled your uh, funny bones how was it able to do it the way it was written and the imagination that you were connecting to that reading suppose if your if your mind was closed suppose if your mind was closed and you were reading the entire text like a for apple b for boy like in the in uh, school days when we were beginning to learn things people used to make us repeat things repetitive rote learning there nothing would register in the mind and uh, that effort was done so that your mind could start working start actively thinking about what you were reading okay so later on if you keep the same kind of thing that i am going to read but i am not going to understand i am going to keep the doors of my mind closed and i am going to read you will never understand will never understand passages so when you are reading your mind should open okay well what is it you are trying to tell me and then you will start spotting those components the conclusion the 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 uh, supporting idea etc now if you read novels or books if you read novels or books all those people who read novels or books they understand this okay now they did not attend any class but they have understood that yes what he is saying is correct you get involved right within the book you get involved okay well then if you say this what is the next point what is it going to do whether it's a self help book or whether it's a novel or whatever it is your your uh, curiosity is picked because you are thinking if you were not thinking and you were only write, reading the text uh, after the second page you will not progress that's why people do not love reading books or articles because they cannot think or they do not want to think while they are reading okay we may make slow progress okay we may make slow progress but if you are not a reader start reading just read one paragraph and try to understand it take all, take all the time you want who stopped it but once you think ah now i know what the author is saying which are the sentences that are important see whatever i am theorizing here are only the tip of the iceberg there is a whole lot that comes from personal experiences okay it's like telling you that rasgulla is sweet now that experience is individualistic it is subjective for everybody how does it actually taste how it tastes for me even if i try to write it in 10000 words it cannot it cannot actually capture what you feel okay so that's a, there, there will always be this subjective thing about reading so i might theorize i might tell you okay okay this is how we understand these are some of the uh, these are some of the components that we look for it will these theories will help okay because they come from i call it theory but it's not a theory it's more like my experience with uh, reading what, what i have done how i have struggled to understand paragraphs passages very dense texts etc that we put across to you as a kind of theory okay but then all these things will make little sense if you are not applying what i'm telling you here in the class okay so start reading get involved get involved now you'll see that if it is something that you are reading in your mother tongue say suppose you studied in a hindi medium school and i give you a novel of premchand you will get involved you read and you get involved that active process starts working because of the language barrier because of our our uh, say vocabulary the uh, sentence structures etc we may struggle with a different language but with practice it will come okay but you are not supposed to lose hope or not supposed to become impatient okay now so the 
active reading is very important and knowing the different types of concepts and then approach to see our question. Sir, how do we, if I read the question, if I see the options and the passage, how do I make sense of the passage? How do I make sense of the question? And how do I choose the answers? All those things require different types of skills. I'll show you some examples, but then I will not taught you any concept. It's not possible to teach you every concept in one class. Okay, but let us see what critical reasoning questions are, how they look. Okay, these indirect questions are. Okay, now the terminology, you'll have to learn all the definition and application of critical reasoning terminology is like assumption. What is an assumption? What is an inference? What are implicit arguments? What are explicit arguments? What is a weakening or strengthening argument? Or what is a weak or strong argument? Now you see, weakening and strengthening arguments. What are weak and strong arguments? Which of the following options, which of the following options can be classified as probably true? or probably false, or data insufficient. Now look at these three. It can get so confusing. Probably true, probably false, and data insufficient. Sir, what is probably true is what is probably false. It is the other side of the coin. So what is data insufficient? If data insufficient is 50-50, then these also look 50-50. So where is the difference? Where is the difference? How will I know which of the options given for a particular question? Suppose this is the question and I have, uh, say, four options. Which of these would evaluate to probably true? And if it, this evaluates to probably true and if this evaluates to probably false, are they not DI? Then how do we do it? Such questions, you will require skills. And once you learn those skills, then making sense of the uh, options and uh, getting the right answer becomes a jiffy. Okay, it becomes very fast. You can do that. So terminology, then application. How do you read? Active reading. This is what I said. Ask questions. Okay, keep your critical mind open. Okay, uh, then approach to CR questions. The best approach for CR questions is to read and understand the question. First of all, read and understand the question and simplify the question because more often than not, what I see is when there is a passage and there is a question, the question is long. Okay, the question is long and students do not understand what the question says. Therefore, they say that the passage is tough. The passage is not tough. The question is tough. So simplify the question first. That is the approach you take. Simplify the question. Okay. Now, when you simplify the question and you know the terminology, what is being asked, suppose when there is assumption, I don't use the word assumption. I write it in many words. But I don't use the word assumption. So you do not know what is the sentence looking for. What is that question looking for? Is it an assumption? It's an inference. What is it asking for? So you simplify it. You learn those concepts in classes. As you come to the classes, as you can start, start attending more classes, you'll know. Because each and every concept will have one class devoted to it. So simplify the question. Then analyze the passage. Now, once you know what the question uh, seeks, once you know what the question seeks, then you analyze the passage for that kind of information. Get the point? And analyze the passage for that kind of information will come only when you know the basic structure of passages. That is when you know RC or when you know critical reasoning or when you know what an argument consists of. So simplify, analyze, and then you formulate an answer in your mind. You formulate an answer in your mind. Okay, that is... So the question was this, I've simplified the question, I've, I've looked into the passage, I've gotten the data from where I can answer this question, and then I form a sentence in my mind. I form a sentence in my mind in response to the question that is formulating and then eliminating the options. That is the approach we take for critical reasoning questions. That is S-A-F-E. S-A-F-E. What is the approach? You simplify the question, analyze the passage, formulate the answer in your mind and eliminate the options. Okay, then when you evaluate the uh, options, always follow this method. Now, though you would do this, though you would adopt SAFE, okay, even then sometimes the approach, the okay, that is the, that is the thing, those are the four things to do, but which, from which step to go to which steps are. Okay, when you are evaluating the options, this is very important. Always read the question, then go to the option and then to the passage. Question, option, passage. 
don't leave any of them midway like sir i'm going to not going to read the question again and again i have the question in my mind we forget the question so it's important from the question come to the passage or uh, come to the options read the options go back to the question and then go back to the passage you will not get them wrong because your mind is very clear clearly focused on the question and the data contained in the option and to be able to match it with the passage okay so question passage option option passage question the three things must always be adhered to huh till you are practicing and once you have practiced enough you will see that it becomes very easy sir i know as soon as i read the passage in the question because you have done many questions you know okay this is the answer without even eliminating the other options you will go to the directly to the to only one answer which is the correct one because what you formulated in the mind you see that sentence done okay that comes with practice okay <clears throat> now let let's try some uh, questions also here okay now here assumption is the hidden premise now i'm going to teach you only two concepts for this class and let's see whether we are able to put that to use critical reasoning concepts i said see the argument the argument is divided into two types the premise and the conclusion right now sometimes there could be more than one premise leading to a conclusion premise number 1 premise number 2 premise number 3 three premises could be leading to the conclusion and the author has written all the three of them and the author has written all the three of them sometimes sometimes the author might do this he might give you premise number 1 he might give you premise number 3 premises are reasons okay for why i am drawing this conclusion so he has given one reason he has given the other reason okay the third reason also but the second reason he chooses to leave out he chooses to not state one of the premises which he could have said but he chooses not to say it okay that is called an assumption so whenever i say an assumption then you have to always understand that it is a reason that could have been mentioned but the author has chosen not to mention it okay the easiest example for this is this give me a glass of water now this is what the author wants okay this is his primary purpose give me a glass of water but it must be based on something which the author chose not to tell you because he understands that that will be a useless sentence it will be redundancy because the the list, the person who is listening to this sentence will understand the purpose of my asking so i don't have to give him a reason the reason i can keep hidden i don't have to speak give me a glass of water immediately you understand that he must be thirsty so he the author thinks that the reader will know that he is thirsty how give me a glass of water the author thinks the reader will think that because the author is thirsty he is asking for a glass of water so this thirsty has not to be mentioned need not necessarily be mentioned so what made him what made the author ask me ask for a glass of water so there must be a basis for this that basis is called the premise and the base basis if you can understand it well then it is the assumption okay so assumption is the hidden premise and inference is the hidden conclusion suppose i say uh, i'm thirsty i come to your house i'm thirsty and i do not add the next sentence what do you do you go to your fridge get me a glass of water if i come into your house and say i'm thirsty wait up immediately you okay sir you walk into it i did not say that i want a glass of water the conclusion you drew when the conclusion is not given it is called the inference if you have to draw it is that clear is that clear beta premises are supporting details i told you kunal you joined me late okay so i said premises are the supporting uh, pieces of information the term we use is premise premise is the basis the reasons for drawing a conclusion okay the conclusion itself is the primary purpose the central idea the main idea call it whatever you want that is around which he has built the entire uh, passage okay so understand these two terms well because these become very important now how to how to answer these questions okay so let me show you a passage uh, look at this first of all see now i'm going to ask you many questions don't give me the answer first of all 
tell me from the three uh, from the two sentences given bullying is a massive problem at our school for one thing the walls at the backs of the school are sp uh, sprayed full of graffiti well which one is the premise which one is the conclusion here first of all tell me back let's not think about this let's put everything we have learned to use first of all analyzing the passage okay or being able to understand the passage well which one is the premise which one is the conclusion bullying is a massive problem at our school for one thing the walls at the back of the school are uh, sprayed full of graffiti so what is the basis on which conclusion has been drawn which sentence is the conclusion which sentence is the premise graffiti is whatever you you write uh, on the walls hmm. very good akhilesh very good avnish very good beta first sentence is the conclusion and second sentence is the premise udipta we have put in it uh, put it the opposite way hmm arka you also said okay i didn't see that so here the second sentence is the premise the first sentence is the conclusion now you see once um, once you know this once you know this this is the premise and this is the conclusion now the concept that is what is what is the question the the uh, the argument assumes so what is the question what the question wants an assumption i am simplifying the question i say oh the question though it's a long sentence i said it says it wants assumption well i say we want an assumption which means there is already a given premise this is the given premise and there is one premise hidden these two this plus this should give me this conclusion okay the given premise plus the hidden premise which is one of these the hidden premise which is one of this which is not written in the passage i have to understand which of the following sentences if i write as another premise i can reach this conclusion definitely okay so the given premise is the given the, the second sentence the assumption is one of these sentences that plus the given premise should give us the conclusion that is given in the passage now you tell me which one is the conclusion Uh, which one is that another premise that should have also been said very good parleen very good see udipta very good ashish absolutely get my point so immediately immediately this comes to our aid so what have we done we have just done this premise number 1 premise number 2 and then the conclusion so what here you are doing here is you are trying to look for a sentence which will connect to the given premise given premise which will connect to the given premise and the conclusion it has to come as a link between now please listen very carefully an uh, an assumption has to come as a link between the given sentence with the given premise and the conclusion okay there are many different methods people will say sir i apply the negation method the negation method does not work all the time okay otherwise sometimes you may not even be able to verbalize that negation method okay so the best thing to do is in my view the best thing to do is understand that an assumption the definition of the assumption itself the assumption is something that must give that must attach itself to a given reason and also to the conclusion if it fails to attach itself to the given premise if it can stand stand alone as a reason even without requiring this then this is not an assumption this is a stand alone premise do you get my point suppose suppose this is an easy example i say 1 plus what is equal to 5 and you say sir this is 4 Okay, four. One plus four is equal to five. Suppose I say five, then this could also be the answer. But the problem is I will not require one. Five is equal to five. I could say five is equal to five. I could say. But the problem is I will then not require one. That is the given premise. So the premise that can connect to the given premise and the conclusion is the correct assumption. Clear. So second is the correct answer. Very nicely done. 
वेरी वेरी नाइसली नाउ देर आर टाइम्स वेन दीज विल स्टार्ट लुकिंग वेरी क्लोज सर ये 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 देर आर थ्री आंसर विच लुक वेरी क्लोज सर हाउ डू आई चूज देन इज द टाइम यू यू विल रिक्वायर स्पेशल स्किल्स skills like syllogisms learning what syllogisms are how they help you identify how evaluate options and the concept to evaluate statements as definitely true definitely false probably true probably false di etc and then also one more filter like can i see one of these options having extra information than the question asks for or what the question asks for i am answering less than what the question is asking for am i digressing from the topic okay so there are many things to learn to be able to identify or to be able to choose the correct option from given options because there are many things that when i set a question paper when i set a question okay i make sure that my options look very similar my options look very similar so that it can confuse a mind which is unaware of the concepts okay one more question now this is slightly bigger so again don't come to the questions read this and tell me the premise and the conclusion where is the premise and where is the conclusion and what is another inference that can be drawn another conclusion a conclusion is a hidden uh, uh, yeah an inference is a hidden conclusion that is one more conclusion is possible one more conclusion is possible tell me which conclusion is possible now this is different from an assumption because an assumption comes as a reason because due to an inference comes as a conclusion so therefore hence there is a difference so keep that in mind and tell me okay so now you tell me no 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 parlin i don't want the answers i don't want the answers First of all, you tell me what is the premise and the conclusion. If I was not enough, then I would have told you. I would have said, "Give me, give me the answer." I said, "Don't give me the go. Don't give me the answer. Tell me which one is the premise and which one is the conclusion, and uh, what we are looking for." Very good. The number of yoga studios in urban areas has been growing at a rapid pace. Well, first line is the conclusion. Major distributors of yoga apparel, and then all the uh, everything else is the. uh premise okay El everything else is the uh, na uh, no 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 the conclusion is the number of uh, that is the premise sorry arka the first one is the premise the number of yoga studios in urban areas has been growing at a rapid pace that is the premise based on that what do i say major distributors of yoga yoga apparel have been reaping the benefits okay why the second line is the uh, the second line is the conclusion and then i go on to explain how they are reach, reaping the benefits okay because of okay ashish i did not ask you the answer did i i said wait for the answers wait for the answers before that you have to tell me what is the premise and the conclusion ashish yes yaad rakhna answer ho jayega sir jo answer to kar diya kya can you do it Four hundred questions, getting them all of them correct all the time. Why, Arka? Yes, are we talking about how how uh, yoga studios grew? Is uh, is the data that is given about uh, the going the growing of yoga studios, Arka, or about the sales going up for uh, sales going up for yoga apparel companies or retail stores? okay so we we'll read carefully the second sentence is the main idea the first sentence is the premise the main idea is supported by the rest of the information that is 25% and all those 2007 to 14 etc now is it answer the conclusion yes there is one answer given i said ashish i said there is one answer given there could be one more answer which could be uh, which more uh, one one more conclusion which could also be drawn this is one of the one of the other conclusions that can be drawn ashish did you get my point i did not say that it has to be all the time like this did i tell you like this that an inference is always like this 
there is only one the conclusion must not be given in the passage it's not necessary there could be one of the conclusions in the passage i am asking you to draw one more conclusion not the prim, uh, not the assumption okay so now if i ask you what is the answer samajh mein aaya ashish did you understand my point ashish when i say since when i say since beta what is it chuki bolta hu ashish to chuki reason hota hai या अतः होता है चूंकि होता है या अतः होता है आशीष तो तो कंक्लूशन कैसे हो जाएगा वो बिकॉज करके मैं लिखी ही दू और उसको तुम बोलो फिर ठीक है ठीक है नाउ यू टेल मी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द आंसर नाउ इफ यू गिव द आंसर करेक्टली देन आई एम नॉट टॉट यू एनी कॉन्सेप्ट स्टिल यू आर गिविंग द आंसर विच मीन्स your mind works critically so you can actually have confidence ki sir ye to ho hi jayega aap zara se aur add kar doge theek hai you just add to our uh, add to our knowledge a little bit more we can actually do it because we are doing it even without uh, you are teaching us any concepts okay the only thing that i will then be doing is make it better refine your concepts and make sure that if you are doing 100 questions you get all of them all the 100 correct that's all will be the difference okay see basically you have to have that critical mind Okay, if you do not have a critical mind, if your mind is closed, then no teacher can open that mind until and unless you are ready to open it. Okay, so you already have a critical mind. Don't worry. Okay, uh, now which which one could be the answer? Most of you have given the right answer. Let me read out the names. Yes, Prakash, very good. very good. Avnish, no, Vida. Prakash, very good. Pratiti, very good. And some of you had given the answer even before that. Okay. uh it all started with wait ashish had given the answer parlin had given the answer raghav had given the answer absolutely bas ekdam and those are correct answers okay ankit no beta okay i'll i'll i'll, I'll explain don't worry now let's again go back to that that's why i told you it's not about the answer it's not shuti no beta it's not about the answer it's about understanding the passage that is being able to simplify uh, the, being able to analyze the passage is what is important that's why i say questions are not so important and un unless you understand the passage nothing else is going to work the number of yoga studios in urban areas has been growing at a ma uh, rapid pace well is it not a piece of information is this the conclusion that he is trying trying to say be yoga studios are increasing is that what you, is that the main idea that the author wants to drive home yoga studios are increasing is that the main idea or the distributors distributors of yoga apparel are reaping the benefit reaping the benefits that is the main idea which one is the main idea batana kunal all that all those pieces of information they are given for what benefits Get my point, Vida. Understand me, Kunal? What is the and what all the all the pieces of information that is given? That is two thousand seven to two thousand fourteen, ninety percent out. All that all those pieces of information are about the number of yoga studios increasing, or the yoga apparel manufacturer, the yoga apparel uh, distributors benefit. Then you understand. Okay. Then the first line is only benefit. Absolutely. Okay. There again, in the light of that, if you think about the answer, you will get them. What is the answer now? There are two answers, sir. Why not three? People who attend yoga classes are more likely to buy yoga apparel. People who are, who attend yoga classes are more likely to buy yoga apparel. Ah, uh, now see, major distributors of yoga apparel have been reaping the benefits. There has been a studio now here. Who people who attend yoga classes? What are you talking about here? yoga studios okay so is it only those people who attend yoga classes those are likely to buy more yoga apparel people buy yoga apparel but they don't attend the classes there they attend classes elsewhere then will this be a it might be a reason but it's a is it a good strong reason it might be a reason but it, is it a good strong reason no sir the best thing to draw the best conclusion that can be drawn without anybody questioning it is the fifth one third will be open to questions 
Third will be open to questions because you do not have enough information in the passage to draw a conclusion like this. Do you get my point? You can draw that conclusion. But then again, I'll keep asking you. I'll keep asking you questions. You'll not be able to justify your answers with information from the data. Okay, then you'll have to go down to that. Remember, that is the only way you can make people understand with or understand the third one. When I told you, keep quiet. That's the answer. That is the only way out because the passage doesn't support your uh, the conclusion you are drawing. Is that clear, beta? So to to be able to say that this is my answer, it should be well supported by the information given in the passage. Nothing should come from outside. Nothing should come from outside. That is what is critical reasoning. You you stick to the data given in the passage. Finish. Okay. Kuch bhi bar se nilana. Correlation is how does it relate? Dono ke beech mein koi relation hai kya? A relates to B, B relates to A. In dono ke beech mein relation hai kya? Mane it's not one way, it's both ways. Correlation. Okay. A relates to B and B also relates to A. So very good. So fifth is the correct answer. Now can you do one more question? See now look at the question. Thank you. Sir, here what do we need to do? Sir, you said that the approach is to simplify the question first. See, the information above provides the most support for which of the following statements. Now, what is being asked? Manga kya ja? Can you put it into one word? What is being sought? Assumption or inference? Relation can be one way. Correlation is both ways. Very good, Shruti. Very good, Udipta. Very good. See, that's why I say sometimes we get stuck in questions. If I can make the question even more confusing, no, Arka, this they are not asking you the assumption. The information above, okay, it says the information above provides the most support. So all the uh, the entire passage is the premise. The entire passage is the premise. You can draw a conclusion. Do you get my point? Silly question ko samajna, terms ko samajna, bahot important. You don't understand the terms, you'll not be able to answer critical reasoning questions. So even if you understand the passage well. Okay? Now you tell me. See where the... Achilles, is that the case? Is the tone of the passage... Negative. And can you say anything? The passage is being written by whom? It could be a doctor. Very good, Kunal. Very good, Kunal. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. no Kunal, that is a repetition. That is a, rep a repetition of the, the repetition given in the passage. I don't want a repetition. I said draw a conclusion. Inference is hidden. So which one? Inference is hidden. So which one more, one more conclusion can be drawn without my counter argument? You say one. I say there are some questions possible. Can you answer that from the passage? You would say no sir. Okay. Two, three. Okay. Last is the conclusion. There can one more con very good parley. Very good. See, the last line is the conclusion. And let's see. It. Okay. Who, is be, who is this being written by? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Who is this being written by? Please understand this. Well, who do you think has written this article? Who do you think is possible? Is it a layman or a doctor? Is it a layman or a doctor? Probably 51%. 51 to 90. Doctor? So can you can you argue against a doctor? Is he saying that I am the only best doctor? Every other doctor is bad? Is that information there? Is he, is he criticizing doctors anyway? Even an inkling, even even a small iota of uh, data that can be used to 
uh, like uh, criticize a doctor no okay criticize a doctor no is it a passage about doctors and doctors prescription no so you some of the answers can go away here itself some of the answers can go away here itself you understand that he asks people to drink water and it requires no medication which one is the answer done akilesh don't rewrite a conclusion given in the passage because it is an the question is an inference the question is an inference i am not asking you what is written as the conclusion in the passage no what is not written in the conclusion in the passage is what i am asking you so what closely resembles the last sentence is your answer what closely resembles the last sentence is your answer don't repeat it i tell you phir baat suni nahi raha na apne hi kar raha apni hi baat manwaate ja raha hmm absolutely pratiti right akhilesh right the correct answer is yes fifth is not the answer which one is very close to fifth sir which one is very close to fifth because nothing else i'll tell you how nothing else can be justified i'll tell you that lekin pehle wo to batao i'm giving you a clue anything that looks very close to fifth option is your answer absolutely ashish because see this is the correct answer fourth is the correct answer those who suffer from dizziness can adequately address the problem by drinking more water the passage is talking about dizziness dizziness and not seeking medication don't seek medications okay simply drink more water okay in any form simply drink more water in any form not your alcoholic drinks it's not written here theek hai to turant sab kuch log yahan sochne lage ki ha aaj to fir maza aa gaya okay i can go and drink a lot of water uh, drink a lot of alcohol alcohol actually is a diuretic okay it has actually takes water away from you dehydrates you anyway that is that was meant as a joke so okay samajh lena dizziness can be done away with water you don't have to seek medication is the main idea so that is all i can say that is all that is all the information there is okay there is nothing more against doctors etc or reaping all the benefits okay uh hmm fourth or with the see oh sorry there are two more two, one more answer those who suffer from chronic rehydration could acha chronic dehydration ki baat ho rahi hai dizziness ki bhi baat nahi ho rahi i'm sorry i said fourth the correct answer is second most of you gave that answer as correct answer i i did not see that i was focusing on dizziness Where, sorry it is not only about dizziness it's about chronic dehydration the passage is about chronic dehydration absolutely some of you said it i'm sorry i did not notice that if you want to address chronic dehydration then don't seek medications don't seek medications simply drink more water simply drink more water why not the fourth one sir the fourth one has a problem it is limiting limiting the passage to dizziness whereas the passage is talking about chronic dehydration so this one chronic dehydration it talks about it what about the fifth one sir one can obtain obtain all the health benefits it says you can only get rid of dehydration all the health benefits okay or uh, to solve the problems and to increase the energy and focus these people need to drink only water either by itself or as a primary ingredient to uh, other beverages it does not the last sentence also does not say this clearly i did not say that then because i wanted you to see the difference between the last sentence and this it is not even the last sentence one can obtain all the health benefits where do you have that information it only talks about doing away with chronic dehydration can you get all the nutrients can you get everything that is you can get all the health benefits of water what all does water offer you is it given here no it can do away with dehydration is given what all other benefits can water give you that you will be bringing in information from outside therefore fifth is not even given in the passage okay then i did not tell you because you were saying fifth fifth and i do not want to confuse you i said well well that is given in the passage this is not even given 
Okay, dizziness is the only thing talked about in the fourth one. Most people in society at issue suffer from chronic dehydration. The main focus of the passage is not that. This is the premise given. This is not the conclusion. This is not the conclusion. I don't want the premise rewritten. I want an inference drawn. Okay, now second is correct. Doctors do not advise. We are not saying anything against doctors. Therefore, second is the correct answer. Is that clear, all of you? Did you understand it now? And I'm sorry that uh, I said four. You said it's two initially. Jobi do bataya or menusko char bata diya tha. I'm really sorry because I wasn't paying attention. Okay, I was in the process of answering, checking that you don't say fifth. Okay, I was not paying attention. I'm sorry. But second is the correct one. Okay. Now, so, 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 we, so what we see here is, what we see here is, it's important when we are dealing with critical reasoning questions to understand that RC and CR are complementary. RC and CR are complementary. The questions asked in reading comprehension can be slightly different from critical reasoning questions, but nobody can stop an examiner from asking uh, from asking RC questions with critical reasoning or critical reasoning with RC questions per se, but they are not different any anyways. Okay, and uh, reading comprehension passages a slightly longer passage. That's all. Critical reasoning questions focus on your ability to identify, correlate information, and draw conclusions. Okay, thank you all very much. See you in the next class. And if you want to learn all the concepts, you should join the classes immediately. Okay, bye bye. Thank you.